Now to some potential problems in your medicine cabinet. More than 150 million Americans take dietary supplements, spending about $24 billion every year. But one consumer group is now saying they found quality problems with one in every four supplements. Our Dr. Jennifer Ashton is back to talk more about this. Good morning Good again. Good morning, Maggie. So once again, what kind of problems did they find with the supplements? Basically a, a couple of different categories. Number one, contaminants. Things like trace amounts of lead or arsenic metals found in these. The second one is something called sham products. They might not contain anything remotely resembling what they're supposed to, ingredients that are over the safe limit, and lastly, occasionally some real drugs masquerading as these proposed supplements. So again, this is unregulated by the FDA, FDA until after these products are on the shelf. So buyer needs to beware and proceed with caution. So is it a problem if we take any of these supplements or just if we take too much of them? Yes and yes. There's okay. always the possibility for toxic amounts. People oftentimes are lulled into a false sense of security thinking that a vitamin or something that's natural automatically is safe. That is not true. Anything taken in excess amount can be toxic. And also certain of these supplements can interact with other medications. Ginkgo is a good example of that. It can cause bleeding. So people who are on blood thinners or have bleeding or clotting disorders should be cautious with that particular one. And the list goes on and on. So people really need to discuss this with their physicians. We did get a response from an industry group called the Council for Responsible Nutrition and they say that by law these supplements must contain in the bottle what is on the label and in fact they insist that the overwhelming majority of dietary supplement companies abide by the law and make quality products. How do we know if we're buying one that is high quality? You know, we just don't know at the end of the day. We don't even know with, with pharmaceutical companies, which are more strictly regulated. So the couple of things that can help consumers have a little bit more security, you want to look for two seals. One is a pharmacopoeia or consumer lab seals. Those tend to have a tighter regulatory process. Also, you want to buy products that are made in the U.S. And with this, just like with most things, don't go to pinch pennies and caught cuss be caught cut costs because the generics can actually be less well regulated. If you have one at home that doesn't have those seals, should you throw them out? You might want to consider throwing them out and with anything you want to talk to your doctor. These can interact with medications so they should be taken seriously. All right, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thank you.